Welcome to the Hydrogen Struggles Leadership Podcast, the premier provider of leadership consulting, culture shaping, and senior level executive search services. Every day, we're privileged to talk with fascinating people who are shaping the future through their leadership and vision. Each episode, you'll hear a different perspective from thought leaders and innovators. Thanks for listening to the Hydrogen Struggles Leadership Podcast. Hello, I'm Adam Howe, a principal in Hydro Struggles London office and a member of Hydro Consulting Simplicity and Digital Practices. In today's podcast, I'm speaking to Matteo Seguin, recently appointed General Manager Nigeria at the Coca-Cola Hellenic Bottling Company. Matteo started his career at Procter & Gamble and then moved to Coca-Cola Hellenic in 2009. He was the General Manager for Coca-Cola Ireland and Northern Ireland from 2016 to 2019. Mathieu, welcome, and thank you for taking the time to speak with us today. Thank you, Adam. Mathieu, during your tenure as general manager, Ireland, Northern Ireland, at Coca-Cola Hellenic Bottling Company, you led a significant transformation for the business. In the face of significant challenges such as Brexit and the sugar tax, can you tell us where the business started and where you were able to take it? Back in 20, early 2016, when I arrived, the business was on a recovery mode. We had a couple of very tough years. Uh, and we were looking at source of growth, okay? Um, both top line growth as well as, uh, I mean, bottom line growth. At the same time, the team was also um, willing to engage into having clarity of the direction of where we want to go and in the need of uh, definitely a transformation. Over the years in our system, the uh, Irish team was enjoying very great reputation, great leaders however, was basically doing the same thing over and over. And as you know, if you don't grow, okay, if you don't go forward, you can often to, uh, to go backwards. So everybody else was going uh, and growing up while we were kind of stagnating with people having that mindset of whatever I do in Ireland is great, so I don't need to change. Um, now with that, we had a clear challenge of growing the volume, the revenue, uh, growing shares, we were losing shares. So that's how we, we started to engage a whole organization saying, okay, the bucket is empty. We need to take charge as a team to try to start a transformation of the organization. Yeah. Within that, simplicity came into play. Um, and that was really a challenge for us. We are a very complex organization, very KPI driven, plenty of meetings, plenty of uh, systems and reports. Uh, and we really had to step back and learn how to do things a bit differently. And how did you get to the realization that complexity was a blocker for growth? I think it became obvious to everybody that we had too many things, too many priorities, too many uh, not conflicting elements, but really we were swamped to everyday business and everyday priorities. So, uh, and that's where you and your team came in at the right time, because we were in that phase of uh, we knew where we were going, we knew where we were. However, we didn't know how to declutter ourselves and to remove all those uh, complexity. There was one key element for us, which was a, a big uh, aha moment in, in our journey together, is a lot of my belief, as well as a team belief, was all that complexity was generated by somebody else. So in Hellenic, we have the business unit uh, as, a, as a profit center, but also group. And group was always coming with different requests and this and that. The reality for our team and the team in Ireland is that 90, more than 90% of the complexity was created by me and my team. And that was really like a shock to all of us, a shock to me uh, for, uh, to, uh, for sure, because we always think, uh, want to think that we are simple and great and all of that. We really decided to focus on that. And as you know, it's not, uh, it's not easy. Uh, together, we did a series of workshops. Uh, one will stick to my mind was uh, end of December in Belfast. We had 10 or 15 of us spent two days. Uh, we had a wall covered of post-it, uh, more than 30 or 40 of them. All of them was one idea to kill, uh, to stop doing, and we couldn't agree on one. Okay, And then after two days of, uh, of looking at that, and, uh, and that was really like a big moment for the team to realize that, okay, despite our willingness, despite it's a very tough uh, exercise to do. Yeah. And I guess it's interesting, there's a bit of a paradox where it's obvious that this complexity tangles an organization up and can stop growth. And it's quite easy for people to give lots of examples of the complexity and blame group and blame other people. But personally, when it comes to actually stopping things and simplifying things, it's a much more tricky task. Yeah. Why do you think that is? Well, I think there is, there is a comfort into complexity. Okay, It's like when you have your closet full of clothes, 
Okay, you don't use that costume for the last whatever five years, but you want to keep it because one day yeah. you will use it. It doesn't work like that. So better get rid of it. Okay, start uh, start fresh and clean. One example we had was a daily sales report. Okay, which had 27 tabs. I mean, so many tabs, and I could trace back every of the GMs in uh, in Hellenic for the last 10 years. Every one of them has a way to look at yeah. the same basic information, yeah. but just adding tabs and the team just keep on doing that because I mean, okay, the GM leaves but you still keep on doing, you never know why, okay? But you never know, maybe you can come back one day. And it's funny because, I mean, me coming now to Nigeria, I find exactly the same. So on the same report, daily sales report, mm. I go back, I think seven or eight tabs, and I find the tabs that I left back five years ago, which are still up to date. People are doing the report every day. And you've been out why. for five years. I, I've been out for five years and I go back and I can, I can see the world the way I was seeing it five years ago. That's fantastic. But that's back to your question. I think we are just, I mean, used to that. And then people don't, don't just question the simple stuff. Another one was to question ourselves of, if you do those reports, who is looking at them? Most of the time, nobody does. So when you stop them, if nobody has questioned, life is good, just stop it. And you've alluded to it, um, experiencing it both in Ireland and more recently in your role in, in Nigeria. It suggests that culture is a big driver of complexity and therefore a big driver of simplicity if you can reverse the things that create complexity. Um, what are your perspectives on a kind of culture of simplicity? It's comfortable to do the same thing. So, I mean, reports, meetings, being there, with the fear of missing out and so on. It's really a comfort zone. Once you cut the, all the crap of complexity and you are in the more simple, you get exposed. It's black and white. It's very, yeah, it's not a forest of... Uh, of reports and stuff to hide behind. So that creates a culture which is, there is much more room for entrepreneurship, much more room for risk, uh, but you need to make sure that you foster that culture of uh, risk taking. So it's okay to take risk. It's okay not to do those reports, not to go to those meetings, to cut all that crap. And, and that's a real change. Now you realize that some people are very comfortable, some people are not comfortable. One other example is a finance team back in Ireland, cutting all those reports and so on. They created more reports. Other reports, because that was the, the, the element of comfort, as opposed to use that time either to go with a customer, to go with a team, just go home and enjoy life. But this is difficult uh, to change. If the boss stops talking about simplicity, then we default back. So it's really like, like when you are on the diet, you need to have this mental shift and you need to be perseverant because that takes time, effort. Now, once you live through it, then you're happy. But you need to make sure you, uh, you're consistent. And playing on the point you make about the, the boss and, in your case, the general manager, do you have any personal reflections on how you may have created complexity for others in the organization? Or on the flip side of that, have you felt any personal benefits from working in a simpler organization? I'm now trying to refrain myself of asking questions. Meaning, not asking questions not to know, I mean, and to not the right question, but asking too many questions or asking people of details if I ask a question, I better know what I'm going to do with the answer. Okay, because it's just not to ask and then 15 people go and work and then come back with something and I do nothing about it. So that's a big reflection of me. When it comes to more simple way of working, it works much better and there is a lot of things you can kill by um, kill that complexity and not doing a lot of it. And then spend time out there with customers, spend time with stakeholders, spend time with out in the market away from the meeting homes. And that's liberating. Again, an example in Nigeria, I'm moving now in the team is used to five, six, seven hours of meeting every week. And I said, it's not going to happen like that. So we will, we're limiting our meetings, weekly meeting in two hours, but by five o'clock, they don't know what to do. Okay. But uh, it's five o'clock. So what do we do now? No, no, we stop. We stop. You go back to where you do whatever you want, but I can't physically, I cannot. Okay. My brain doesn't function anymore. So, so off you go. Yeah. And there's a link, I guess, going back to the, the imperative for growth within Ireland. If you're able to create capacity, seeing customers, talking to customers, spending time on innovation is more likely to drive both bottom line and top line growth compared to spending a lot of time doing business with ourselves. From complexity to agility, there is a piece in the middle that we usually forget, which is simplicity. You need to take stuff out to be able to put stuff back in. And the stuff back in is really what matters. We always say that, but we don't do it enough, which is the best decisions are taken in the market mm. with customers, with the team, with the stakeholders. And that's, you need to create capacity and time for that and space in your head, but also, I mean, physical time. And that's what we've been doing both in Ireland 
even more now coming to Nigeria, killing all those time spent in meetings, looking at reports, looking backward instead of forward. Yeah. That creates a lot of space and a lot of time to take the right decision yeah. uh, and meet the right people out there in the market. And when we talk to leaders all over the world, there's, there's a couple of kind of mega trends that um, they're thinking about at the moment. One is trying to become more agile in their own organization. And the second is looking to embrace digital technologies to help their organization. And I'm wondering if you have a perspective on whether technology actually helps or hinders the pursuit of agile. Uh, technology will help a lot and is helping a lot. Again, moving from a very developed country, Ireland, where it's a home of all the uh, Facebook, Google, Amazon, and the rest of it, I thought I was advanced. Now I'm moving back to Nigeria, uh, where Hellenic has invested a lot in BDA and a lot in, uh, in uh, artificial intelligence. And I'm finding myself into a world which is much more advanced to Ireland. And that's kind of uh, interesting and so on. We can track our own truck. We can track all our uh, BDs and sales reps, what they do from the morning to the evening, every single step of the way. Uh, we are optimizing their, I mean, we are even recommending for them uh, the orders and so on, things that we don't even do in Ireland. So there is a, a whole world there. We can definitely simplify, uh, accelerate the work if and when done properly. Yeah. If people are indeed using the tool, uh, then it works. If people are like taking shortcuts, then it doesn't work. But there is a huge uh, amount of uh, um, simplicity and, and, uh, and optimization of time that we can do through technology, definitely. And as a leader in a more agile organization, if you compare to when you became a GM those years ago for the first time, are you noticing a difference between leading an agile organization in 2019 and a less agile organization, say, 10 years ago? Big time. But again, it requires for me that step through simplicity, that, uh, that we work together and so on to get rid of a few things. Uh, the agility beyond the buzzword is how you make it real. In our case in Ireland, it was all about the sugar tax, Brexit task force. Uh, but all those work in task force, in simple team, working and, on a common interest and, and, and so on, really worked. We are replaying the same thing in Nigeria in a very different environment, much more chaotic, uh, but the same principle applies. Uh, and that worked very well. And when you look at leaders in the organizations that you're leading and you're thinking about a more agile organization, what are some of the leadership characteristics that you look for in somebody? The way to embrace change is one of them. In, in a more developed world like Ireland, it was not exactly that at the beginning, but we went through that. In a world of Nigeria where it's chaotic and people add that in them. However, when you bring talent from outside of Nigeria, they have to embrace it quickly. The ability to explain easily and clearly and focus on a few key priorities. It works everywhere, both in developed market as well as in developing market. If you change direction every single day, it doesn't work. Uh, if you're able to cope with the uncertainty, find a way to make it happen, then it's brilliant. And just a final question. Um, what advice do you have for other leaders as they think about how diversity and inclusion efforts add value to their business? Let me tell you a story. When I came to Ireland, uh, my team, the leadership team, was less than 10% female. In the less than one year, we moved from 10 to 60%. And now we're still 60%. So that's good. And we want to do that. Same at the lower level. We were at 20%. We are now, at, I think, 35 to 40. So we joined in Ireland the club of 30 plus across all. I'm talking here simple gender diversity. I'm go now going to, uh, to Nigeria, uh, where 90% of our customers are women. However, in the business, I am in the same situation that I was back uh, four years ago, which in my lead team, only two, I have only had two females out of 15 people. Wow. That's going to change big time. <laughs> my team knows yeah. because we need the diversity, we need the inclusion, we have to change. And how did you achieve that within Ireland? It's setting very clear criteria and, and very clear objective, which is if I have two people which are as good as each other, men and women, I will go for the woman. I will not compromise on the, and I will never compromise on quality. Mm -hmm. So again, if it's the other way around and the man is by far the, okay, the man will get the job. Otherwise, the woman will get the job. Otherwise, it's going to take us years to get where we are. So that's one. The other one is how you work on maternity. So when women go on maternity leave, they know that they have the job coming back, yeah. that we take care of them, that it's not like a, a showstopper, but in the life of a woman in a career life, professional life, there are different time of priority. So yeah. when you have younger kids, you want to take more time for the, for the kids and so on. 
and it's okay. But when the kid is nine, ten year old, then people are back in the track, full, full blast. You just have to leverage, listen to what people are telling you, and and find a way. And the whole team is ten times better now than it was ten, four years ago. Hopefully, in Nigeria, it's going to be the same as well. Matthew, thank you very much for making the time to speak with us today. We wish you all the best in your journey as general manager at Coca-Cola Atlantic Bottling Company, Nigeria. Thank you, Adam. Thank you. See you soon. Thanks for listening to the Hydrogen Struggles Leadership Podcast. To make sure you don't miss more future shaping ideas and conversations, please subscribe to our channel on the podcast app. And if you're listening via LinkedIn, Twitter, or YouTube, why not share this with your connections? Until next time.